everyone. Welcome to today's Accelerate Your Performance podcast. I'm your host, Janet Pilcher. Thanks for having a desire to be your best at work and help your organization achieve success. This podcast is all about actions we can take to improve workplace culture and achieve results. And they're all aligned to our nine principles framework. I'm excited for you to meet our guests for today's episode. Today we have with us Dr. Nate Nelson, Superintendent of the Porterville Unified School District and Lillian Durbin, President of Trustees at the district. Nate is serving his fourth year as Superintendent at Porterville Unified. He has worked at the district for 23 years. Before his current role, he served as Assistant Superintendent for Business Services for two years. Prior to that, his roles at the district included Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources, as well as Director of Technology. Nate graduated from Porterville High School. He was originally a political science major at University of California in San Diego, but switched to business and went back to the Valley where he later earned his master's degree in business administration from Fresno State in 2005. He later completed his doctorate in educational leadership from the University of Southern California in 2011. Now let me tell you about Lillian. She's been an educator for more than 40 years. She has served in all capacities in the field of education, from instructional aid to vice principal to principal. She currently serves as Porterville Unified School District's governing board president. Since joining the board, one of Lillian's major goals has been the expansion of educational options for students particularly in the area of preparation for college and career. She takes pride in the district's vision, as well as its mission to provide students a dynamic, engaging, and effective educational experience that prepares them with the skills to be productive citizens in a global society. As you'll hear in today's episode, Nate and Lillian are models of collaboration. We need that more than ever in today's schools. So today they'll share with us what they do to foster a strong relationship and communication between school leaders and the board. I'm so excited to have them with us today. So let's start. Um, This is a great, this will be a great opportunity for us to get a superintendent and board perspective in in working with you all and the good relationships that you have. We need this Um, so much across our districts. And so I'll start with you, Nate, in answering this first question and looking at how does uh, two-way communication and investing investing time and building a collaborative relationship with your board, how does that positively impact your district? I think given for us, for anyone, the boards, the entity that sets direction and really establishes the vision and sets the tone uh, for the district. It's just been incredibly helpful in PUSD to have a board that's viewed internally and externally as just absolutely supportive and in touch with our school sites. They are regularly uh, visible at events. They do informal and, and formal school visits with our leaders, meeting with teachers, you know, in our improvement uh, journey as part of our employee engagement surveys, the boards actually called out uh, on a number of occasions as far as one of the groups they'd like to thank uh, for uh, making their jobs uh, easier. And so really for us, that translates to being able to, I think, retain great employees and having a reputation in our community that Portable Unified is a place you want to go and work because you do have a board that's uh, just Again, very supportive, very collaborative, and really responds to the needs of our internal stakeholders. And then I think we'll talk about later several of the conversations they've had over years to build programs that the community has really indicated that they uh, need to support local business and just the needs of students and families outside of our schools. So it makes my job much easier. It's uh, just, I think, a different reality than a number of superintendents have in a daily or a yearly experience. I am fortunate in that I'm uh, the latest in a line of superintendents that 
definitely have a tenure that bucks the trend as far as a, a lengthy uh, stability attached to the position. Uh, we've got superintendents that uh, have been a couple decades in the chair, and I'm hopeful that I, I can uh, match their longevity. Yeah, I'm sure you will. And I tell you, you know, Lillian, I remember connecting, you know, at the Carnegie Summit and, um, you know, just the, was just so um, impressed as well as, you know, just just honored with what you said about the school district and the superintendent and your passion toward toward that as a board member and so, so, so needed right now um, as, a, as a great model and example across the country. So, you know, Lillian, I'll turn to you. You know, what, what makes that happen from your perspective? Well, I think that the two-way communication is what makes it happen. Communication is going to be one of the most salient things that will direct your district in a positive way when people can talk to each other and know what to do. And when Studer came on board, I was so excited because I'm going to date myself now, but in the, in the 80s and 90s, I went through a workshop that was over an entire year, once a month workshop called Quality Circles. And when I heard what Studer had to say, you are Quality Circles, which was a program designed to teach leaders how to run meetings, but you are Quality Circles and you've, you've added everything else in with that to make communication a very positive and a very productive um, avenue in our district and process to you. So I just wanted to tell you that, but um, what all of the communication provides is transparency. I think that, that Dr. Nelson always knows what the board is doing. We know what he's doing and our staff and parents know what the district is doing. And that is, is golden. It allows us to all be uh, floating that boat, so to speak, in the same direction. And the longer we can do that, the better things will be. Because, and you know, we make mistakes and things happen, but Dr. Nelson has developed um, developed a kind of environment for both the board and the community and the staff that is open door and it's okay to make mistakes. We learn from mistakes, that's what we do. You know, all the example of scientists that how many times did they make mistakes before things became right? Well, we're onto that for a couple of things. You know, we're trying hard, we're making the mistakes, but in every mistake, there's a golden uh, message for us. And we, Dr. Nelson tries to include everybody in the solutions of, of whatever we're doing and um, staff development, um, things with parents, with kids, and um, that really is a strength in our district now. And it hasn't always been. So I'm just yeah. so happy because you can tell by me talking, I've been around yeah. here a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it just reminds me that, um, you know, as we think about some of those core leadership principles, um, although, you know, we call them timeless, you know, and, and even though that that were years ahead, you know, from the 80s and 90s, I mean, there's still some very relevant aspects of the leadership world. And, and um, you know, just appreciate you connecting back to that because your experience and what you contribute as a board member um, is a tremendous asset in that way. So, you know, I think about, um, you know, so Nate, as you think about like, you know, what a board, boards working together, um, I think you can feel pretty, pretty um, lucky in terms of having a good board to work with you, but it just doesn't happen, you know, because we, w we will it to, you know, I mean, what is it that from your standpoint that you think are some of those routine things that really help make that occur, that re good relationship occur? I think this board is very intentional and really a professional board in constantly going to different opportunities for their own uh, growth involvement, their regular attendees, and uh, it's not just uh, passive attendees, but the California School Board Association Conference, uh, they're uh, a part of every year, and then have brought in different representatives on board governance, uh, Mrs. Durbin, and I think almost the entire board has gone through the uh, master's in governance option that's provided to them. And I, I think they are very careful, each of them to kind of draw that line as to what the role of the board is, what the role of the superintendent is. And there's regular communication with 
I think community and stakeholders in the different roles, even when I think that's difficult, uh, where it's probably easier sometimes to tell a neighbor that uh, you'll make a call and make things happen as a board member, and instead it's referred to the appropriate party. So I appreciate when those instances happen, usually a, a board member will let me know. And then I guess from my perspective, as Mrs. Durbin shared, I do try, we've got a really talented board with a diverse perspective uh, in from each of them and, and uh, different experiences that really we're able to plug into different places. So we have a board member that you know, might have some uh, experience in agriculture that really we try to engage in, in different programs here and become a champion for a particular program and beyond advisory groups. Uh, and I think just being able to look at the diverse group that we have and plug them in where they make the most sense. Uh, we've got staff that are just extremely impressed with how attentive they are to, you know, a passion program that they have. And I think the board uh, takes energy from that. And, and then the, you know, day-to-day -day things, I think Mrs. Durbin and I probably speak and she's obviously the current board president and it may vary depending on who's in the position, but regular phone calls with uh, board president, uh, email updates, the fundamental things like calendars, I mean, letting board members know what's going on in a district or size is a challenge. And they do take their role seriously as far as being present at athletic events, band performances, and just trying to be sure we're communicating those opportunities out to engage with the district in a variety of ways. And uh, I think it's an area for growth that we're still working to, to get better. And the last thing I or one of the things I hate is a last minute invite for a board member that uh, has a busy schedule. And I know they still get some of those, but uh, for the most part, one of our new uh, initiatives this year is a central calendar that really plans out the entire year. So, you know, before a school year even begins, we can really see what's scheduled down to the, the day, the, the last month. And I think that's going to be powerful good. across the district. Yeah, it's really, really good. So let's talk a little bit more. I know you have some examples of some popular programs or initiatives that have resulted from the collaboration between the board and the district and the community. So, you know, Nate, if you'd start out and I'd love just uh, any any opportunity to to learn about some of those specifics. Sure. I, I think the program that we're uh, most widely known for and that's within the community and then even uh, have some recognition across the country where we have different school districts come and visit to see what we're doing in the space. It's our Pathways program, uh, Link Learning, where we're uh, connecting subject-specific content with what's needed in industry. So we've got a, a 14 open choice pathways where students that are entering high school can choose to uh, enroll in an industry uh, specific pathway that then allows them to work on projects in English, math, science, social science that are tied to uh, industry focuses, really making the learning more, more real, more relevant. Uh, we have advisory boards tied to each of those pathways with community members that volunteer their time to uh, inform the uh, school district what is needed uh, in industry today and uh, kind of shapes uh, what our, our students do day to day. Uh, there's internships attached to those programs that these businesses host, and we're talking you know, large businesses down to small, uh, you know, single sole proprietors, and just the investment in this initiative and for for us in our community it's really been transformative. We have uh, conversations on a regular basis with our, our city government that talks about the impact our pathway interns have had in that space and just really uh, allowed us to do some great things. Mrs. Durbin's probably much better suited to answer the question uh, in this uh, particular program, given that she was there at the inception and I think uh, was pivotal in bringing it to fruition. Well, there's a backstory here, and it's a story that all districts can use with their history. But um, when Pathways started, I was a school principal. And at that time, um, I think it was right at, either right after our district had become uh, unified. It wasn't always unified. It was an elementary district and a high school district, but with a common um, 
superintendent who was working very hard with, with two districts. But anyway, I was rejoicing because the elementary district, Kate, had been into all the school site plans, state of California things. And we were integrating education and collaborating and all those buzzwords that you've heard for years. And so we at the elementary level, finally, the high schools are going to get the message. They're going to do something besides be the sage on the stage and, and be in their isolate room. So, you know, I'm really overplaying that. But anyway, because we've had good people. <laughs> and then I'll tell you the other backstory is that I was in a pathway or oh. um, a link learning situation in our Porterville High School in the 60s. I think Dr. Nelson could tell you that he was in a pathway in the high schools. When did you graduate? I'm like, two days ago. He's just a kid. <laughs> um, but in, the, in probably the 90s. And so the components of these ideas have been in our district because we're a small rural district. When I first came, we were 7,000 people in town. Now we're 60,000 plus. So we've grown up here and we're a farming community. We have a lot of families with a lot of needs. A lot of them are poor. And for our students, we cannot wait for them, for things to be available for them. We've got to bring things to the students because they don't have advantages of being, being able to get a lot of things. So that's the backstory. Pathways is golden. And when Pathways started, we just kept building and building and building for the reason not to promote Pathways any more than we were trying to build um, a format for our students where they would catch up with having advantages that kids have that live in bigger cities and have access to many more things. That was good. And with those connections and relationships and what you'll love with the communication, we would go to link learning um, conferences and we became knowledgeable about what was going on with different companies and different large organizations. And one was Qualcomm. And when I first went, being a farm girl, I first went down to see Qualcomm. I thought they were taking me to the stadium. Well, they were <laughs> taking me to the to uh, their te technology department. They got interested in us, and so then we um, had we inherited a little county school, and it was kind of up in the base of the mountains. And if we didn't do something with it and just left it sit still, it was going to you know bad things would happen to it out there all by itself. So Qualcomm got with us and loved us and we loved them and so out there we have a future ready lab and it's all tech mm -hmm. so we have literally the little red schoolhouse i'm i'm you can come see it it sits there on that site and then we have a big future ready lab and an anna an, an maker statement um an anna maker lab i'm going to say it wrong i haven't struggled with that one but anyway they're right there at the same start same site and then we have the uh, in the rocks, we have the little pods that um, the Indians would do their grain. So we've come up with opportunities like that through the collaborations with other people and other programs. And it's golden for, uh, for our students. Um, Military Academy was one of the other things that we built up. Our, our um, community is very patriotic, and um, we have a history of participation in all kinds of military programs and and um, experiences and so um, we're fortunate to have a military academy and we're trying to make that a leadership academy not just for the purpose of service and i could go on and on so now i will be quiet and <laughs> let dr nelson add anything else he wants uh, yeah and i think um, mrs durbin's description of the military academy and, and the community is uh, spot on. It, just to emphasize what it is, it's an academy, only one of four in the state that actually has military staff from the California military department assigned in conjunction with school site staff. And so it's it's really uh, quite an experience. And I think our uh, community, it's a sad uh, fact, but we're per capita, I think, suffered some of the highest number of uh, losses uh, as far as casualties in various conflicts uh, in the past. I think the Vietnam War especially was one of those. And so, as Mr. Durbin indicated, there is really a sense of patriotism and, and the location of military academies fantastic in that it's right on the highway that uh, kind of goes through town and oftentimes as uh, traffic is passing by when we have students out in the formation you have uh, you know people honking their horns just in support of you know what they're doing there one of the other items um, that i think the community also 
uh, really has insisted uh, continue and the board has been responsive and figured a way to marshal resources is our fine arts programs where a number of districts uh, have been forced to cut those due to budget uh, constraints. We're actually very uh, invested on that front all the way from elementary up through high school. And so we have uh, actually use that as a mechanism to provide prep time for our teachers where we have a roving fine arts team that goes to elementary sites to free up uh, teachers to collaborate grade level to collaborate with one another and then just kind of build that capacity into our high schools and our our bands are very competitive and different uh, events that uh, take place different competitions that take place and again a real source of pride i think for the community that's great you know as um as you all uh just love listening to you talk about the programs and the excitement that both of you have for them and i know it's contagious uh, in your school district and in the community. You know, I, what I'd like to do as we close today is really ask you to close with this, because I think it's so important. If you could give one piece of advice to people, because of just the thinking of what you just talked about in the pathways in your program and what you've been able to build for your students. We need for boards and executive teams in school districts to work together. You know, how do we make that happen in every school district? What's your one or two pieces of advice that you would leave for people to say, this is what makes that work? And I think I'll start from a board perspective. Well, I'd say the most important thing is to just show up. That's easy. You have to show up. You have to show up at the important events. You have to show up in the um, superintendent's office when you have questions or information that would help. But being there, the board in our district sets a stage for if it's an important event, we want to show up because we're doing two things. We're gaining knowledge and um, information we can use to move forward, but we are demonstrating for the staff that it's important to be there. So the board members attend national conferences with the teachers, with the staff. I think Dr. Um, Nelson and a group just, just got back from, from uh, NAF. We're involved in link learning and board members go because if we're there, we're saying this is an important thing that we want to engage in. And so we want you to, to reflect on this as a very important component. And the same could be said for all these areas. We show up at pathway events, we show up at school site events. And why your program is so very golden, the communication is how we make things happen. And the better we can do with that, your program is starting to provide great communication between elementary and junior high and high school and community, our junior college. And so showing up and talking to people and being a very good listener. That's the other one. You have to listen. And That's right. To, I am talk too much and I'd have to tend to shut my mouth and <laughs> open up my head and my ears and really seriously listen to what people are saying. Um, and while I'm listening, not be there to evaluate what's being said, anything, get into it and listen from the heart. Absolutely. And you're so genuine. I mean, I just, I'll, I remember our conversations and, you know, have you in, in my mind in terms of looking at model school board members, and it's very evident why. So thank you for your contributions. So from a superintendent's perspective, what's your thought? What are your advice? What's your advice? It's just hard for me just because I grew up in this district. Uh, you know, I'm a graduate and Mrs. Durbin said I'm, uh, you know, precursor to a pathway uh, product. And for for me, I've spent my entire career uh, in, in the district and I've watched the board uh, from a number of different chairs and just really appreciated just how uh, supportive they were throughout, um, even uh, where there were some difficult decisions, uh, there seemed to be that message of unity and stability and uh, just a consistency between all members where it was, you know, a common message, common vision. And I think in speaking to other superintendents, uh, I realize that's pretty unique. That's generally not the uh, uh, experience that you have. And so it's probably an answer that may be difficult to replicate and that it's just viewing them. I, I realize they're, they're my bosses uh, essentially, but they're a partner for me. I mean, it's uh, a group that I rely on and lean on and try to include in everything that I do every day. I, I think uh, working together, it's just been amazing to see uh, what we've been able to 
to produce and you know it's the partner rather than you know, another layer uh, another obstacle that's not what i hear from uh, superintendents but uh, that's always been my approach just to try to be as inclusive as possible to listen to their perspective to you know share as much as i can and you know, i learn every day from from each of them so good and i know they're so proud of you you know as being part of this community um, for such a long time. Uh, what a great opportunity for people in your community to see you in that position and the success that you'll do, continue to do with taking your district to excellence. So I thank you both so much. This is so refreshing. I have just have a smile on my face as we're talking because it's so refresh, refreshing to see a genuine par partnership um, with people who care about students and families and their communities and each other. So I thank you so much. We need more examples of how they can teach us about building good relationships between the board and executive leaders and leaders in our school districts and organizations throughout the country. I so appreciate them giving their time and talking to us about the importance of that relationship. Thanks for tuning in. To this episode of Accelerate Your Performance, we invite you to share this episode with a friend or a colleague. Also, we'd love to hear what you think about the podcast. Please take a moment to follow and rate our podcast and Apple Podcast. And I look forward to connecting with you next time as we continue to focus on the nine principles framework so that we can be our best at work. Have a great week.